But this, this was a song, I, I'm, as a musician, a lot of times the Lord will remind me of old songs. And in 1970, believe me when I say this is not what I'm aiming for, okay? But I don't know if you can read it. It's kind of small. But it says, Ball of Confusion. It's a song by the Temptations. And it just so fits today. And look, you know, the lyrics are a little complicated. Segregation, determination, demonstration, integration. <laughs> Aggravation, humiliation, obligation to our nation. Ball of confusion. Anybody remember? Oh, yeah, that's what the world is today. It's a, you know, don't, it's not a Christian song, but I'm just saying, the world is a ball of confusion today. All right? So if ever they need to hear the truth, tell us, aim at Jesus, it's today. And then there's this great line, oh, great Googalooga, can you hear me talking to you? It's just a ball of confusion. That's what the world is. Eve of destruction, tax deduction, city inspection, bill collectors, mod clothes in demand, population out of hand, suicide, too many bills, hippies moving to the hills. It was 1970, the war was still going on. People all over the world shouting, and the war. Man, ball of confusion. Where's the shelter in that storm? Jesus Christ. No matter how confusing it gets, my compass stays pointed to true north of God. So I just uh, t taught a class for Tricia um, on Wednesday because she was traveling at a meeting that she was speaking at and a part of. And in the, at the end of the class, people said, well, can you put a, a playlist of worship songs together? Because in our morning devotions, we want to be able to do what you're asking us to do in, in the class. But I just wanted to just say what I wrote on this playlist. Every morning, kneel and still your heart before God. Commune with God your Father. Take communion in remembrance of Jesus. You could do that in your house. You could take communion in your house. You don't have to be in church to do that. Hand the keys of your life to Holy Spirit. Boy, this is a hard one, isn't it? All right, I'll hand you the keys. I'm meditating on God's word. I'm singing of God's goodness. And don't take back the keys. All right? Make that determination that no matter what goes on today, I'm letting you stay in charge. I'm not going to get hijacked by my emotions. Yeah. There was a man who spoke here, Steve Backlund, and his wife, Wendy. It was a phenomenal meeting. I just took a two-minute clip from, from what he said when he was here because he says it so well. I, th I thought we could just hear it right from the source, and, and Ray's going to do that. She wrote a great book, which uh, is another book that Trisha has, has used in the past about our emotions. My wife wrote a book called Victorious Emotions, and she very succinctly says, if you want a different emotion, you need a different belief. And we found this out. Surrendering our beliefs is more challenging often than surrendering our heart. The Lord asked Wendy, can you surrender the beliefs that you're shy, inadequate, and can't speak well in front of others? Can you surrender those beliefs? <clears throat> and she says, but that's who I am. Ha <laughs> ha. And she hears this, that's not who you are, it's just who you've become. That's not who you are. The only reason, because what we, what we realized is that we renewed our minds more with our past experience and our feelings than what he was saying. Because mind renewal on one level is just whatever you come into agreement with. I agree I'm not powerful. I agree I'm shy. I agree I don't have the gift of healing. And, and, and what happens is that we, because current mind renewal creates future experience. Whatever I renew my mind with today will transform my tomorrow. He, he asked me, Steve, can you, can you surrender the beliefs that you're less than other leaders and can you surrender the belief that there's something uniquely wrong with you? <laughs> Let's laugh at that lie, by the way. Ha <laughs> ha. Ha ha. Can you say, well, Lord, it feels so true. There's something uniquely wrong with me. If it feels this true, does it mean it is true? He said, no. Feelings don't validate truth. They just validate what you believe to be true. Selah. <laughs> so this is what he said. 
Wendy wrote a book called Victorious Emotions, and she succinctly said, if you want a different emotion, you need a different belief. <laughs> Man, that's good truth. I tell you, when I had this vision that I'm going to tell you about, it was this came back up in my spirit because even though he's not as well known out here, he's a profound, great, gifted teacher. And, and part of the ministry is let's laugh at that. He said it a little bit there. Like, that's such a blatant lie, devil. I'm laughing at you. But you think you can get me to believe that. And then we found that surrendering our beliefs is more challenging than surrendering our heart. Because <laughs> she had said to the Lord, I surrender my heart, just take it. And, and the Lord said back to her, I already have your heart. I need your beliefs, <laughs> which is in your mind. And that's why we need to, the renewal of our mind. Amen? And God said, can you surrender the belief that you're shy? And she said, no, but that's who I am. And the answer was great, right? But was she sinking her mind with heaven at that point, or was she sinking into what the world said about her? You see the difference? You can synchronize your words with heaven if you're listening and you're connected with heaven. But, oh, no, that's just who I am. I'm just shy by my nature, and a leopard can't change his spots. Like, you know, like there's all these lame things that people say. You're a new creation in Christ, and you go from the milk to the meat. You mature. You go through a process of transformation. And Jesus wasn't being discouraging when he said a bad root can't produce good fruit. It's like, no, you can change your roots. And all that bad fruit can just die off and go away. And once there's a good root, you're not going to want to go back to the bad root anymore. Because good fruit tastes a whole lot better. That's not who you are, God said. That's what you've become. And that kind of ties into what I'm going to tell you about what I saw. Jesus asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah. Others say Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And then he says, Who do you say that I am? And then my namesake, Peter, always seemed to be ready with a word. Doesn't mean it was always right. <laughs> Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. It didn't take Peter any time to give that answer, it would appear. He knew who Jesus was, and he was following Jesus because he believed what he said right here. No hesitation. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus went on to tell him, you know, that flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. My father showed you that. So he knew it at a deeper part than just Knowing it up here as a fact, he believed it in his heart. Big difference. So then God said to Steve in that little clip we saw, can you surrender the belief that there's something uniquely wrong with you? Anybody else ever had that feeling? Uh, can we just be a little more honest and raise our hands up a little higher? Okay. We're getting rid of the shame. Shame off you. Shame off you. You're a new creation. He makes all things new. He calls Lazarus out of the tomb and takes off all those stinky grave clothes. Didn't even stink by the time he got there. So Steve said, but Lord, it feels so true that something's uniquely wrong with me. Is that sinking my thoughts with heaven or sinking into what the world would say, spiritual poverty? And you don't want spiritual poverty on you. And you're in control of how, how rich or, or poor you are in the spirit. Because you control that. It's right here in your heart. Guard your heart. Out of it flow the issues of life. But if it feels true, doesn't that mean it's true, God? And what God's going to say, no, you don't walk by your feelings. You walk by faith, not by sight. If it feels true, doesn't that mean it's true? That's another lie. Whoever said this? People in the world say it all the time. Oh, just trust your heart. But the Bible says man's heart is deceitfully wicked. So you need to only trust your redeemed heart when you know it's lined up with God. Amen? God said, no, feelings don't validate the truth. They only validate what you believe to be true. And boy, we can get some work done on that. So Jesus says to Peter, who do you say that I am? Peter could have said to Jesus, Jesus, who do you say that I am? And we should all be saying that right now because that's the answer we want. It's what he says. We sing that other song too. I am who you say I am. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Wow, man, that's so powerful. 